So if we remember about Rasky's class shifts, the salient finding will be bright, uh, the nodule that is bright on T1 and dark on T2, which is fairly characteristic. And some people think pathognomonic, there should be no enhancement and there should be no calcifications, arachnoid cysts. Let's remember that they follow CSF signal very rarely. They can hemorrhage. They almost always do not produce any symptoms, but they can grow on to produce mass effect. Epidermoids show very high signal on diffusion, but not, not as low of a signal on ADC maps as we would expect based on that degree of hyperintensity on DWI. They have this uh, dirty appearance of the flare signal with non-suppression, hamartomas, we know that they are nearly iso-intense to cortex, but they can look a little bright on T2-weighted images, and that is okay, and depends on the relative content of gliosis. Craniofaryngiomas are characterized by cysts, calcifications, enhancement. We know that adamantinomatous craniofaryngiomas, which are seen in children, have cysts and calcification, but papillary craniofaryngiomas usually are more solid appearing and they typically do not have a significant amount of cysts and they should not show calcification for the most part. Germinomas, because they are very cellular tumors, are dense on CT. They have very low ADC values related to restricted diffusion. Chordomas are very bright on T2-weighted images. Remember the honeycomb appearance, they are fairly well circumscribed on MRI. And we, we have those uh, septations that are dark on T2 and show enhancement. Chondrosarcomas can look similar to chordomas, but they are usually less aggressive, more indolent tumors, and they tend to occur off to the midline. Optic pathway gliomas, we talked about the differences between sporadic and syndromic tumors related to neurofibromatosis type one. We know that they may or may not enhance. And pituitary adenomas, we talked about the recognition of tumor in the carotid sulcus venous compartment, as well as encasement, more than 67% of the internal carotid artery to indicate cavernous sinus invasion and how that increases the risk for surgery. Sarcoid, we talked about T2 hypointensity. That is one of the characteristic findings. However, that is not specific that we see it in other granulomatous processes, as well as in Langerhans cell histiocytosis. We talked about hypophysitis with its very non-specific image appearance where we see avid enhancement of the infundibulum with or without enhancement and enlargement of the pituitary gland. And finally, we briefly discussed Langerhans cell isocytosis, and we talked that it may be indistinguishable uh, from hypophysitis, but that it tends to favor the uh, hypothalamus and infundibulum, and that these patients can present with diabetes insipidus with an absent pituitary bright spot. And with this, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much.